Hello, hello. We know that in Indian literature, post-independence fiction is a very, very important area. So many major writers, major works. This video will be on post-independence first generation novelists and short story writers. There will be another video on post-independence second generation and then another on contemporary writers. Dear friends, what are the features of post-independence literature? We have already seen post-independence literature is more about social realism, stark contemporaneity. It provides a critical view into the society of India, talking about individual versus society, talking about the psychological conditions of people, talking about family relations, not so much about nation, mythology, religion, etc. And diasporic writers are on the rise. More and more people are going abroad and writing. So we know when we talk about post-independence fiction, what names come to our mind first? Tell me. The three great novelists. They are Mulk Rajanath, R.K. Narayan and Raja Rao. Guys, these writers were not so much important in exams until recently. They were asking more difficult contemporary writers, etc. But of late, questions are coming from very early 19th century literature as well as the founding fathers of Indian English literature, like the three trio. The trio, Anand, Narayan, Rao. Mulk Rajanand was born in 1905, one year before R.K. Narayan. And Mulk Rajanand was from Punjab. He had very liberal communist perspectives and he wrote stark social realism, depicting the problems of the underprivileged classes and he was called India's Charles Dickens. And you know, his first novel became very famous for its depiction of Dalit problems. The novel is untouchable. Baka is a bhangi boy. It is a caste, it is a lower caste. And one day in Baka's life is depicted. One day like Ulysses. And Mulkra Janand was inspired by Western writers, maybe he was inspired by Ulysses itself. In Baka's life, uh, there are so many troubles and this one day represents a microcosm of his life. It was E.M. Foster of the Bloomsbury group who wrote the introduction to Untouchable. Baka, what is happening in that one day? Let me tell you in a nutshell. Baka is cleaning the toilets and his father Laka is abusing him. And uh, Laka is also giving Baka his own job. That is to go and clean the roads. So Baka is wearing his second hand uh, western clothes. And he loves to be like the Tommies. That means the Englishmen. And he is cleaning the toilets and cleaning the roads. In the process, a lot of people abuse him. Some people are good to him. There is an upper caste man who comes and touches him and abuses him for that. There is an upper caste woman who throws two chapatis at him and it falls on the dusty road. There is a hockey match he plays because Havildar Charat Singh is very sweet to him. He gives him a new hockey stick. And also he lets him go to the kitchen and eat something from, the, from his house. That is so beautiful, Raka. Baka never had such an experience before. And then during the hockey match, one upper caste boy, because Baka is the low west caste. Even other Dalits are upper caste to him. And he uh, 
there is a boy who gets injured in the hockey match he takes this boy home and that boy's mother abuses him are so many problems and at the end he uh, listens to mahatma gandhi speak and mahatma gandhi is talking about the upliftment of harijans baka also over here is the conversation of iqbal nath sarshar a poet and r n bashir a lawyer there is a salvation army officer his name is colonel hutchinson he is also telling baka about how there is no caste in christianity and some jesus christ will save him he does not know who jesus christ is he does not know who ram is either and there is also something he hears about a flush machine so he is confused at the end he is hopeful actually he is hopeful and he is thinking maybe a flush machine will save him because he won't have to clean toilets after that maybe christianity is the solution maybe gandhi is the solution gandhism so the terrible realities of the dalits that is what untouchable is about and one day it uh, follows the three unities now there is the next novel kooli the untouchable came in 1935 kooli came in 1936 kooli is the story of munnu munnu is like bakha and untouchable 14 year old boy here it is not one day of his life but his whole life that we are talked about told about munnu is abused in his own auntie's house and from there he goes to babu nathuram's house where babu nathuram's wife bibi ji is also very abusive only one chota babu is there who is a little kind to him everybody in that house treats munnu like a monkey munnu do this munnu do that munnu go there munnu go here ah oh, munnu is so tired it is not even like a human being that he is treated from there munnu goes to prabha dayal pickle factory in bilaspur there he gets something like a a uh, family you know how in oliver twist Oliver Twist gets a family feeling in Fagin's school even though they are pickpockets and robbers. So he loves uh, his life in Prabhadayal's pickle factory more than ever and then the pickle factory shuts down. Unfortunately because of some uh, problem. And then he goes to the grain market. There he becomes a coolie. And from there an elephant trainer takes him to Bombay there again he becomes a coolie where in sir george white cotton mills look at the irony guys sir george white cotton mills is not at all anything to do with munu munu is a boy without even clothes and he is working to make white cotton for the upper caste people at this time munnu lives in cat killer slain bin in suburban conditions and then the mill also closed down there is a communal riot munnu is trying to escape from it by running to malabar hills there he is run down by mrs main boring's car munnu becomes main boring servant mrs main boring servant finally he dies of tuberculosis munnu is depicted as a very human being even though nobody treats him like a human being it is a very heart rending story uh, our mulk rajanand has written many other novels like this about the lower class caste people's sufferings for example two leaves and a bud gangu a punjabi laborer in an assam tea plantation is similarly suffering then we have barber's trade union which i love because the lower caste boy chandra chandu is teaching the upper caste people a lesson he is a barber 
and he refuses to work for the villagers because he procures a bicycle. He and his friends, everybody, they go and work in the town. The villagers all grow their beard and they can't uh, survive without the barbers. I like that. Mulk Rajanand also wrote a famous trilogy. Tell me the name. Hey, are you paying attention? Tell me the name of Mulk Rajanand's trilogy. It is. Okay, I'll give you a clue. Or options. You, everybody wants options. Balu trilogy. Ramu trilogy. Lalu trilogy. Malo. Yes, it is Lalu trilogy. It is about Lal Singh, a Punjabi man. He's growing up. It's like a Bildungs Roman and he is uh, even taking part in the First World War. Trang. And Anand looked at Shakespeare. Of course, Shakespeare was dead, but he got inspired by Shakespeare. And he read Shakespeare's seven stages of man, seven ages of man. Anand wanted to write an autobiography, seven volumes, like Shakespeare's Seven Ages of Man. Unfortunately, only four were written. Anand has a collection of four autobiographies, Seven Summers, Morning Face, Confession of a Lover and The Bubble. All right. So that is Mulk Rajanand, the amazing writer who laid the foundations of Indian literature. Along with R.K. Narayan, who was one year Chota Bai to him. I told you, na? All of us know that R.K. Narayan is famous for creating the place called Malgudi. Malgudi is in South India on the banks of the river Sarayu. And in Malgudi, there are a group of people living, places, people. Narayan just brought this place, fictional place only alive with his novels and short stories. You know that he wrote Malgudi Days short stories. Narayan started his career with a trilogy. Swami and Friends, The Bachelor of Arts, The English Teacher. These are the three novels that form his trilogy. Swami and Friends is about childhood. Bachelor of Arts is about youth. Uh, English teacher is about mature adulthood. Right? Swami is growing up in Malgudi with his friends. And then in Bachelor of Arts, Chandran is falling in love with one girl, can't marry her, depressed, marrying another girl. Then the English teacher is about Krishnan. He is marrying a woman, but that lady dies and he is seeking salvation and he's inspired by a very spiritual man, a headmaster and he learns to communicate with his wife's spirit. That is the English teacher. This novel is illustrating the Satyavan Savitri principle. There is another novel that illustrates the Bhasmasura principle. Bhasmasura touched his head and <gasps> died. It is man-eater of Malgudi. You know, in Narayan, always something happens. In Malgudi, that is. A foreigner or somebody from outside will come, disrupt the peace of Malgudi. And this is an allegory for colonialism. The colonizers, the English people are coming and disrupting the peace of India. Did you get that? In Manitor of Malgudi, Nataraj is a man living in Malgudi and everybody is happy in Malgudi. Vasu, a taxidermist comes. Taxidermist means one who stuffs dead animals. And he causes so much trouble, Bapre. And then Vasu becomes the end of himself. He dies because of his own actions. This is the meaning of man-eater of Malgudi. There are so many other novels where you see um, People like Vasu, you know, people doing wrong things, materialistic, immoral and bringing upon themselves their own end, their own destruction. And in Narayan, it is not always a very big tragedy. It is like a humorous depiction. It's like a warning, such as the novel Financial Expert, where Margaya 
is sitting under a banyan tree and cheating people and making money and then finally his son gets destroyed he also is almost destroyed Every, everything is lost everything that margaya possessed is lost and then the guide the guide is the story of a poor man who is called railway raju he is cheating people and making money and then he invests all his money and effort on one woman rosi or nalini and slowly he changes he becomes a, like a spiritual guide a supporter of a whole village so people are petty people are corrupt but it is possible that there is also something good in them that is the message of the guide the vendor of sweets the talkative man these are all such novels waiting for mahatma is a novel with a difference because it is about india's independence movement in waiting for mahatma shri ram and bharati are the protagonists bharati is india and shri ram is mahatma gandhi then there is the painter of signs which is also novel with a difference because independent india and its uh, development is allegorically presented here there daisy it presents shantanu ganga myth daisy is engaged in a uh, family planning campaign of indian government so rk narayan has created a whole diversity of uh, characters to represent indian society and they are very very foundational to the development of indian literature in english raja rao was a writer with a difference his first novel kantapura published in 1938 is uh, an allegorical representation of the gandhian struggle murti a villager is bringing gandhian's uh, satyagraha into kantapura his village kantapura is a fictional village which is like any other indian village as you see from the famous four word of the novel achakka is an old grandmother who is narrating the story to us bringing together all the castes and all the diversity of people within that village and at the end even the women take up the independence struggle and the village is destroyed but people have found their voice that is the theme of kantapura raja rao's second novel the serpent and the rope is very different and it came much later it was published in 1960 raja rao was a brahmin and a very spiritual uh, vedantin kind of a person and that is exactly what you see in the protagonist rama here Rama is married to the French lady Madeleine. She is a nice woman, but the Brahmin Rama does not find a companion in Madeleine because she goes into Buddhism and she is searching for her own salvation. Rama then meets Savitri, and he finds in her the right, correct, feminine principle. But Rama himself had. Uh, take an initiative to get savitri married to another person and then finally rama does not break up her marriage he wants her to go back to her family and husband the cat in shakespeare is a novel that is very different from either kandapura or serpent and the rope the cat in shakespeare is a metaphysical comedy involving ramakrishna pai and govindan nair where govindan nair is like a guru a very funny guru for ramakrishna pai cat and shakespeare shakespeare refers to govindan nair's you know funny theory of the philosophy of the ration shop in shakespeare cat refers to the marjara kishore nyaya path of bhakti so it is a kind of a metaphysical plus contemporary humor kind of a novel and uh, then he has written a lot of short stories and other works but these three novels that i discussed are the most important ones 
There are many other first generation post-independence writers such as Bhabani Bhattacharya. He is the author of novels like So Many Hungers which depicts Indian society, post-independence Indian society and its problems. He who rides a tiger, that also similarly is about Indian society and how uh, we have created problems in the society. So many hungers is set against the Bengal famine of the early 1940s. And he who rides the tiger is uh, about a poor blacksmith, Kalo, and uh, how he poses as a holy Brahmin and he is unable to stop his uh, story, his fictional life, he is unable to end. That is it. G. V. Desani, have you heard of? What are his important works? He wrote a Ulysses like very modernist work all about H. Hatter and a play, Hali. They are very important and uh, very complicated narratives. Atiyah Hossein is the author of Sunlight on the Broken Column, which is a partition novel that reminds me of Rama Mehta, who wrote Inside the Haveli. All these are depictions of Indian women in the early 20th century. An interesting writer from this period is Manohar Malgonkar. He was uh, from the Maharashtrian royal family and he um, fought in the army. He wrote about these experiences in his novels such as Distant Drum, A Combat of Shadows, A Bend in the Ganges is a partition novel which has an epigraph from Mahatma Gandhi on non-violence. A Bend in the Ganges represents partition. India is bending. You must all have heard about K. A. Abbas. He was a very major screenplay writer and uh, he made very blockbuster movies, very famous blockbuster movies like Avara, Bobby, etc. Mera Naam Joker. Uh, he was also a novelist. His novel Inquilab is very famous. Hey guys, are you all taking down notes? Uh, Kamala Markandeya is another important first generation writer. She is the author of novels like Nectar in a Sieve and a handful of rice which depicted the traumas of post-independence society. E uh, rural versus urban divide, families and poverty, these are very important issues that she took up in her novels. There are many novels that she wrote, Kamala Markandeya. Uh, Possession is another important work by Markandeya. Let me tell you about at least two, three more writers because they are also very important. One is Nayantara Segal. You know, she is the wife of Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, niece of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Don't you know? And Nayantara Segal is famous for the novel Rich Like Us, which won Sahitya Academy Award. She has also written other important novels like A Time to Be Happy, Mistaken Identity. Generally, she depicted urban societies, sometimes women. In Rich Like Us, there are two women, Sonali and Rose. Sonali is Indian, Rose is white woman living in India. Uh, Chaman Nahal is famous for Gandhi Quartet. Chaman Nahal wrote uh, Azadi, the first novel of Gandhi Quartet, published in 1975. And a lot of uh, national and political events like the cabinet mission plan, assassination of Mahatma Gandhi, etc. from the backdrop of Azadi. Lastly, Ruth Pravar Jabwala. Ruth Pravar Jabwala was not Indian. She was German but married to an Indian. And she is famous not only as a novelist but also as a screenplay writer. Ruth Pravar Jabwala won a Booker Prize for Heat and Dust. Heat and Dust is again the story of two women. One woman is telling the story in retrospect of her great-grandmother. And she had come to India, white woman, white, they are white. Uh, that great-grandmother had come to India, got into trouble, uh, you know, relationships and so many things. Finally, she got pregnant without being married and she went and lived in town X, it seems. The same thing happens to the great-granddaughter. Heat and dust. 
and then uh, she has written screenplays for merchant ivory productions many of em foster's novels were turned into movies now it was ruth prover jabal howard zend etc it was she who wrote the screenplays so i have given you a very thorough overview of all the major first generation writers many of them can be expected in the exam uh, and even more important than these writers will be of course the second generation and contemporary writers please follow everything that i have said make your own notes study and enjoy studying because you are on the royal road to being professors and vice chancellors so enjoy every bit of it all the best bye bye